Hey everybody, welcome to the 1947 Operators Podcast. In order to increase the rate of technology innovation in India, we need to increase the number of operator angels in India. Hence, we are launching the 1947 Operators. 1947 Operators is a podcast that unpacks the investing journey of the best operator angels in India. We will be covering areas like what drove them into angel investing, what's their investing process like, how do they source deals, pick deals, and when deals, how do they evaluate founders and the market size, what value do they bring to the cap table. We're hoping the 1947 Operators podcast will help more operators start their angel investing journey. As a result, we will see an increase in the number of operator angels in the startup ecosystem. Today, we had Pratik Agarwal. Pratik is a passionate entrepreneur and a fintech expert with over 18 years of experience. He has worked at leading NDFCs and fintech companies like Bajaj FinServe and Bharat Pay. In this episode, we covered areas like what drove him into angel investing, what's his investing process like, learnings from investing, his thesis behind Growth Cap VC that he has recently launched, and his advice to other operator angels who are looking to start angel investing and more topics. Awesome. I am super excited to have Pratik Agarwal on the 1947 Operators Podcast. Pratik, welcome to the show. Thank you, Shiva. Thank you so much for having me here. Excited. We'll dive right into it. What drove you into angel investing and what was your first angel investment? Uh, so so I, I was, uh, you know, of a view that I want to learn more about uh, founders, uh, right? I want to know more about startups and uh, I've realized that until unless you are in the game, right, you really can't, uh, you know, get time from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So idea was to start investing because once you, you invest your money, right, it definitely builds trust. And, uh, yeah, that's how I got started. And, uh, in my alumni network of I am Koi um, I had a friend who was just starting up and he approached me first time for an investment. And I was like, I like the guy and what he's doing. So that was my first investment. Got it. And, uh, You know, initially you had, okay, you know, I want to be close to these people uh, and one way is through investing. But what was the process like? How were you able to build the network? How were you able to source the deals and and how were you able to uh, make judgments uh, on investments? So, so once I did the investment and, uh, you know, I started, uh, you know, spending some time with them and understanding what you, how you building it. How are you raising funds? You know, what is the valuation? So I learned all the basics, uh, you know, and uh, and that's where I got introduced to various uh, platforms where where my friends started suggesting me. And uh, obviously through my network, yeah. you know, uh, the existing syndicate leads or existing investors started sharing the deals the moment I made myself available to them that, yes, I am uh, ready to invest now. Right. So if you have any good deals, I would love to evaluate and, uh, uh, you know, uh, invest my time as well as my money. So mm-hmm. so that is how I got introduced to all the platforms, people. And it it wasn't easy. It, it, it really took some time. Right. So I think it t- took me about six months to p- create profiles and understand how the AIF works. What are the kind of AIFs, uh, you know, which are the angel uh, platforms where you can uh, invest in, you mm-hmm. know, and that's how I got introduced. I think I think I I also remember that's how I got introduced to you. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's right. We were just chatting about it offline. And uh, I think I think, you know, you've been through the journey, meaning you were an operator uh, and you started investing in other founders and operators and you've done about 40 investments. I think you recently wrote a blog post where you said, Hey, you know, after corporate life, uh, do I want to build one or enable hundred others? Uh, Maybe can you 
give us you know uh you know a quick rundown onto the framework of how did you come up with this decision so that was a, a very very interesting and it was more of introspection right uh, and uh, in my past 15 20 years of corporate life i've worked with like 15 companies not 15 companies maybe 15 roles mm-hmm. right 15 roles 20 22 bosses and about uh, 12 uh, stints right and uh, i have always been very observant uh, you know from a distance as to how the ceo operates how the board meetings were conducted uh, how were the reviews and i was uh, learning and grasping from them and then moving my uh, you you know learning and moving my roles as well right learning from them and and eventually when i got a chance to uh, build three to four companies um, that was syngenta which i led to myself uh, then was uh, selfin which was my startup which which i moved on very quickly and uh, last was bharat pay as a chief business officer mm-hmm. that was the time when i when i really when i talked to myself uh, i i thought that uh i have a certain way of working i have a certain understanding of the businesses and i think i'm pretty much uh, there in terms of what works what does not work what are the trends and how people behave and you know uh how can you build a successful and sustainable company mm-hmm. so that was the time when i had my own uh, ways of working right and i realized that uh, it's it's the time where i want to build one company which is 0 to 1 and 1 to 5 and 5 to 50 mm-hmm. or i want to help multiple startup founders and mm-hmm. and i think when i looked back i was more of a 5 to 50 and 50 to 500 i was more of a growth and a scale up guy mm-hmm. right and uh, post bharat pay i felt that uh, i do not want to start up again right while i what while i went and i had went ahead talked to vcs got some term sheets and i was just about to start up yeah. uh, right all by myself but then i realized i'm not something uh, you know cut out for it yeah. right and maybe i'll be uh, in a better position if i start working with founders mm-hmm. uh, right and uh, if i looked at the data points uh, yeah. right and saw about say 100 founders i would have met right in last 5 years or three years or whatever right uh, realize that there are some amazing founders amazing products and uh, strategies right and maturity levels as well uh, right uh, however not everybody has access and capability and experience of uh, you know un- understanding how this system entirely works right what is it requ- be uh, required for a story how do you want to think and develop your product which is not for today but for tomorrow and and during these conversations i realized that if i join hands or if i start supporting these founders out of 100 maybe i just pick up like five of them right and uh, and work with them as an operator advisor right we can create wonders so i did some test pilots i did some small investments started investing a lot of time uh, during my work uh, you know weekends and stuff and and realized this this is working brilliantly and then the operator investor model came into play uh, where i not only uh, advised them but also invested my own money which built trust uh, right because uh, then i'm not giving only gyan right uh, uh, and and we are talking numbers mm-hmm. right so yeah that's how that's how this journey started yeah and you you've taken a massive risk which you you know we were talking about this uh, just earlier where you know in in order to invest you sold your house you can correct me uh, but there has to be a very high conviction in this asset class to do that what was the thought process around that uh so so yeah i mean uh, you know so when i was taking this uh, call of moving out from my corporate life and what do, what do i want to do and what will keep me busy and motivated for next 10 years 15 years uh right i i i was i was looking at my uh, you know past decisions and uh, understanding of people mostly right mm-hmm. and i think my uh, bets were pretty much on um you know on the dot i would say right yeah. where where if i if i would have uh, 
um, you know, uh, probably taken a call on a product, on a person or a company, right? It really spanned out that ways. And this is out of uh, probably the sheer thing that, uh, uh, you know, experience, I would say. So this was this was very interesting, uh, Shiva. Uh, and, and while I was taking this decision of uh, wanting to move out from my corporate role, mm-hmm. right, uh, I realized that uh, I, I sometimes take uh, desperate decisions, right, if I have something at stake, yeah. right, and I perform best when I'm left alone, I perform best when... Uh, I do not have any, uh, uh, you know, uh, any stress, uh, right? And uh, from the family front, I didn't want to take a chance. And I want to be very sure that I have a runway of at least 36 months, uh, right? Before I take such a high risk, uh, right? Of uh, probably getting into something which never existed, uh, advising, trying to build a career uh, by advising. At the same time, putting your own uh, uh, money, uh, I mean, you have, Every angel investor has only two options, right? Use that money to go on a holiday and spend it on the family and leisure or else trust a founder and give it to him for building the business, Mm -hmm. right? So with this thought, I was like, you know, if I think I am right, if I understand people right, if I understand the business and I've done some bit of uh, operator and execution in last 15 years, right? I think I should take a bet on myself. Mm-hmm. Right. And that is where the decision came in that uh, uh, why shouldn't why should you worry about the EMIs? Mm-hmm. Right. Can you make yourself, uh, you know, risk free with that? And then I calculated what is the amount I have uh, taken? What is the loan? Uh, what is the kind of properties I have? Mm-hmm. Right. And and figured it out that I think I can make much better money. Uh, right by investing that money somewhere else which is startups rather than in a real estate property Mm -hmm. right so i i actually uh uh you know changed the entire uh, investment strategy and um i don't own anything um uh, you know uh and and i've just put all the money uh to work yeah uh, right so this was the part of that decision making where i felt that uh you know uh, this house will not give me so much of returns, but uh, this is the right time to invest in the right founders. Yeah. And, uh, you know, startup ecosystem is buzzing and, uh, you know, there is enough and more capital available on the table, mm-hmm. provided you know how to build a business. And if I have done, uh, uh, you know, uh, build businesses in the past, right, I think uh, I, I could take a call on myself. Right. And that's where this journey started, which which is paid off. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, we'll dive into this uh, very quickly. But seems like, you know, uh, you, you you're confident because you have the evidence. You've done it. You've seen it. Uh, hence, you're all in into this asset class. I love it. And uh, Pratik, I think you've done over 40 plus investments. Uh, what's your investing process like? So my investing process is, uh, you know, or rather investment comes later, right? First is that I never say no to a meeting, uh, right? Um, the coffees and the beers are on me, uh, right? I love interacting, chatting with people, especially when there is no agenda, uh, right? So so I just keep meeting founders, just keep obliging the LinkedIn requests uh, and references and keep meeting people, <coughs> And what I've realized is that the network is, uh, you know, if you if you keep talking to people and keep telling what you are up to and what you're doing, right? Uh, not today, not tomorrow, but in next three months, you will have at least one inbound reference coming in, right? And that's how I've met most of my founders, uh, you know, so it's over a coffee. We love chatting, uh, you know, if we enjoy chatting with each other, if we can agree to disagree and if uh, there is some sense in the business model and it's not the story, right? Then I just commit it, uh, bases my understanding uh, of of whatever uh, uh, the conversation I've had, uh, right? Uh, however, when, when I go deeper, right, uh, before writing a check, um, I actually uh, try to understand what is the background of the founder, right? Uh, whether he is uh, cut out for a zero to one and one to five journey, or he is matured enough to take the company from five to 50 as well. 
mm-hmm. right if the second answer is answered right then uh, i would go ahead with it because uh, there are a lot of founders who are great at storytelling and uh, you know building that story around only the 0 to 1 and 1 to 5 right but at 5 you will see they have lost out of the plot they don't know what to do next they are so busy raising the first two rounds that they have forgotten execution mm-hmm. uh, you know so so i think the founder maturity and ability to to cross question to take some initial uh, uh, negative feedbacks mm-hmm. uh, right and which shows maturity mm-hmm. right second is um, is he able to clearly articulate his asks right is he one of those guys who thinks that he's he's one of those you know blessed guys and know it all right so if you are uh, if you can ask right questions if you can ask for help right that is one of the amazing qualities i feel which is uh, currently needed right because people want to help but you need to go out and ask for it uh, today there are so many founders i see where i have or or the network has uh, you know the key to their locks right but but they're so uh, within yeah. right uh, that they do not come out and ask for help and they're missing out on um, on everything right so i think one is the founder second is the product yeah. uh, product is secondary again for me because if the founder has these qualities right and he is understanding the ecosystem the market uh he's talking to people and uh you know the uh, the product can be tweaked right and and uh, that is also seen right uh, so i think i first see uh, the founder experience and the product and uh, most importantly uh, the behavior and and the cultural fit whether he will be able to uh, you know build the company from 5 to 50 because that is the time when actually the returns will start coming in mm-hmm. right uh, and there have been a few cases where uh, while i have not uh, uh, you know invested in the initial times right i have waited for like 2 years when 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 i see this guy building it understanding it do it and uh, doing it himself and uh, and then we have partnered yeah got it no and uh, you know it's it's a journey which is you know yeah uh you you keep learning uh, over time and and you've been doing again like you know for 3 4 years now what's something that you know now uh pratik you wish you know you had known it earlier yeah there are there are lots of things but these are very small little things right uh, uh you know something like uh which which is already uh laid down right uh, and i always used to wonder when when people used to say you know uh don't invest in in uh, uh you know related parties when either it's a duo or a you know couple or something of that sort right yeah. uh then very very young founders uh, right and uh, probably some some things like this right a very aggressive or somebody whom who's uh you know governance and risk is risk is very high but govern approach to governance is very low right um, so so i think i haven't really uh, I, i didn't know about it but in these last 3 years when i experienced right now i know that why and what and how right so so you know what happens is that i'll give you example um if if you are related party right uh, sometimes and and relationships in india uh, do take precedence right and sometimes uh, you know during the uh, scale up time you have to take lot of hard calls and decisions and somebody who was great uh, you know great uh, a partner uh, when you were doing the 1 to 5 journey yeah. uh, right cannot come up the speed from 5 to 10 or 5 to 50 right and you need to either find him another role or her another role right and if you are related parties Uh, the founders find it very very difficult to take this call right and and that's what i have uh, kind of uh, understood a couple of times yeah. right so i am very this is a red flag for me uh, now mm-hmm. second is uh, somebody who's uh, has less experience but he's entering the field mm-hmm. right uh, 
and and very less experience and operator experience i mean uh, my my liking is more towards people who have done it on somebody else's money and then they have trying to build themselves uh, right however people who ha- don't have experience but have all bookish and theory knowledge yeah. uh, right they get stuck at uh, you know when when the growth comes yeah. so so i'm quite wary of the fact now uh, investing in people who do not have uh experience and who haven't really executed themselves mm-hmm. uh right uh so yeah some of these things i i just feel they are some red flags uh, uh now yeah and you know fast forward to today now I, it seems like you're institutionalizing your investing uh which is through growth cap vc uh would love for you to uh you know maybe talk about the thesis how do you uh, we already know like you know your thought process around it uh, to begin with uh your thesis what's your uh, investing uh, check sizes and what kind of industries you're most excited about so so fintech comes to me naturally uh, right and most of it is through reference and uh, you know half the credibility check is already done right uh, i do not really um, uh, you know go by uh, the regular thesis which people have that if you have tier 1 vc if you have this vc that vc only then i'll write a check no i think if my conviction i would look at it independently every deal right i really don't care uh, if somebody else is, has understood the business or the founder or somebody there's something uh, i i look at it independently and i really uh, uh, you know if i like thesis i would invest and then uh, possibly i will go go back to my vc partners and and kind of put forward my thesis yeah. right um, also i would look at uh, you know what are the entry levels and what is the kind of exit strategies i have uh, initially at the start itself right and uh, till now i was doing i mean when we started when i started investing uh, you know two and a half three years back right uh, uh, i i was investing uh, in startups where i understand it and the check check sizes were very small right uh, later on the check sizes increased and uh, i i started investing uh, in founders and as per thesis which built over a period of time right and now i feel that i'm constrained of capital because as an angel investor and an operator you can only invest so much right but i just love what they are creating and uh, i i i wished i have uh, probably uh, you know i could take away uh, uh, i would do the entire round right yeah. and this is where uh, growth cap ventures comes into play where where it's not about the fund it's not about the money it's just about uh i know this founder will succeed i yeah. know what he, he gets on the table i know i am taking a risk on my personal capital right and over last two and a half years i have started giving exits to my investors i have seen my investors uh, you know committing uh, large amounts right in my thesis uh, so so it was just a natural progression where uh i'm just being greedy and saying you know can i pick up the entire round right and probably the idea for 2023 is that uh, if if growth cap ventures is leading the round right uh, who all can co lead and uh, and can we create that community where uh, the moment you have this uh, uh, founder and the startup in the community right he gets access to everything mm-hmm. right uh, i mean you just execute whatever yeah. you need just pick up the phone yeah right so yeah i want to pick up the entire round uh, that's that's where this fund comes into play got it and uh, you no know, pratik you know you've had a journey where you know typically a founder or operator the next step for them is either they start they start up again they join a startup or the angel invest part time and that's what you were doing you were angel investing part time and later on you realize this is what you enjoy the most and you've taken you know a step forward which is going full time investing 
if you know you have to if you want like if you were to give a advice to somebody you know who wants to follow the footsteps of what you followed what advice would you give them how to get uh, started with angel investing and i'm talking about operator angels so so yeah i think we we uh, i should touch upon this topic that uh, i consider myself as a secondary investor right uh, and a primary advisor uh, right i do not want people uh, uh, to come and ask for money right uh, uh, because because that's not my prime focus right uh, the prime focus is you come to me for uh, probably an advice of how to build a business how to take it from 5 to 50 or 50 to 500 right what are the right products uh, validate your thesis with me uh if you want i'll interview your cxos or your ceos your leadership whom you are hiring because cultural fitment is the main thing right you can hire and fire but that wastes a lot of time and money right more than money it's the time right which is which is very important so so advisory is first which gives me access to amazing people mm-hmm. right who can actually be deployed a uh, or who can actually be kind of you know leverage to join a startup who need some complementing skills i can hire for for you we can build something right you don't know your worth most of the times right in in a few startups of mine where i have invested uh, the founders just didn't know the worth of uh, uh, what what they were building right uh literally I had to sit down and start making slide by slide the story the pitches the uh you know the the kind of revenue streams which can be uh, generated moving them from probably a tier 3 city to a tier 1 city right introducing them uh, right and uh, i think uh, i think now they in in a span of 2 3 years i have a couple of uh, investments where uh you know whatever we have raised for them about 3 years back right uh, that is something we just use as uh, sponsoring a event now right something like 20x 30x is lying in the bank uh, and it's a profitable companies mm-hmm. so so i have i've been an op- uh, advisor first and an investor later mm-hmm. right and uh, initially if somebody wants to be uh, you know just an investor or an angel investor right right on to somebody where your thesis and their thesis match uh, at least you know the business well you you can ask right questions so do not invest in something where you do not understand the business right a second is go ahead with some friends who are investing co investing along with them uh, along with you uh, right and put in small amounts uh, but do put in uh, significant amounts which really pinches you if you lose that money right if you do not do that you will not ask right questions and you will keep uh, blaming somebody else for your investments right uh, so i think i think my only advice is uh, the right way to do is to to write on to somebody in the start and start investing but ensure that your outcomes what are your asks with that investment right is very clear because what i have seen lot of my uh, angel investors and my supporters also right they really don't know why they want to do it right and literally my first question to them is what is it that you want to achieve out of angel investing mm-hmm. right do you want to write a fancy name angel investor on linkedin yeah uh, do you want to create wealth by seeing uh, you know that somebody has made 100x and 50x and 10x yeah right or what what is it what are you committing right so i think your first initial ask should be very clear which i don't think so people are clear i think people go with the first thing that they want to have a fancy angel investor yeah onto their profiles and that is a recipe for disaster uh right so so i think just be clear on uh, how do you want to do it uh, be sure that you are uh, talking to the founder at least once because out of um 100 uh, calls right i think 50 calls uh, i have rejected it or my my supporters have rejected it when they heard the founder mm-hmm. right because the pitch decks and everything else is made by somebody third party right but when when you actually interact uh, right uh, you don't find it interesting 
so i think uh, ask for uh, uh, you know a catch up or uh, ask questions to the founder and putting put in whatever money which will pinch you at least you know until unless it pinches you you will keep losing money yeah you keep you won't learn and you no know, it's a great framework like in the beginning uh be the advisor first uh figure out your tribe and start go investing with them and secondly uh, do have the skin in the game because if you don't have that then you know you'll probably uh, won't end up learning fast enough enough uh, in general and uh pratik will switch gears here you know the the third section is uh taken over by my co-pilot in the back his name is alfonso oh okay and uh he's asking you know pratik to all this whatever success you've had up until now how much would you attribute that to luck i think uh, i think uh, 70% 70% to luck uh, uh, and and 30% to uh, probably the conviction which i have and uh, uh, you know the uh, never give up attitude Mm-hmm. right uh, because because i i today also i thank god for kind of you know uh, just being uh, there right because i have been doing my job right yeah. uh, and i think i think it's just the luck factor and luck and somewhere you know all of these things just come together right so called karma and stuff uh, right it's all the same i feel right but uh, as far as you are true to yourself right and you are doing your job perfectly uh you know i think i think uh, i mean i i pick up the cap tables i uh you know do it myself uh you know uh, showcasing every slide uh you know uh what is hel- helping uh, the founder eventually right yeah. so i think uh, i would say i would say just just keep doing what you do which i have been doing it uh, right whether i was in job uh, i was also an entrepreneur in all my jobs right uh, where where uh, even if i was employed and i need to just ensure one thing is that the end of month salary right my work should be more than what i have uh, got it yeah. right that was my only thing um, and and if you keep doing that uh, right over and over again uh, right over delivering uh, right i think i think you you know it you know and you can talk and you can understand a lot of things mm-hmm. so so while you keep doing all of these things not everybody gets lucky yep. right and i think i have uh, so i would uh, give lot of credit to the luck i was just there at the right time right and i had those uh, uh, mentors and those guys who supported me mm-hmm. yeah 70% luck and 30% your own effort uh, you know showing up uh, over delivering and making sure you're doing it like that's that's really it's yeah good. but luck and won't doing come it long enough and I, one more thing is luck won't come if if that 30% is yeah. uh, uh, you know not there right yeah. so let's put it this way 30% creates the luck yes absolutely <laughs> and uh pratik it could be a founder it could be an operator or it could be an investor that you admire the most and why i think i think uh, what i love about kunal shah right is um, is is you know his approach which which i think it's his approach is is that i'm investing in a startup uh, not and don't take it as i'm i'm endorsing them right i have the money i have been a founder so i'm just supporting a founder right and uh, that's where uh, i think i just love that and want to want to probably be in that position sometime uh, where where i can support founders who come through reference right not everybody but yes uh, you know today i would i would probably do two deals out of 10 right but i want to do eight deals uh, and and uh, you know endorse two three of them right yeah. but uh, at least write small checks to the other 6 7 so i think that approach is amazing which is giving back to the society and eventually uh, if there is no money there is no oxygen right you can't survive so i think money is very very important 
and it also creates a lot of motivation it also gives gives the founder a uh, uh, lot of confidence to go and talk to another 10 and yeah. i would love to have a lot of uh, you know founders and people who have created wealth right probably you know start investing more mm -hmm. yeah no i'm hoping as you know more and more people will get inspired by, by other guests that i've had and yourself as well and uh, you know pratik we've known you uh, because of your you know as a as an operator now as an operator investor uh, what do your friends know you for who are you outside of work my friends don't know what i'm doing <laughs> or uh, but what do they know you about it doesn't have to be uh, around work like what do you do on the weekends yeah so i have got two sets right uh, two sets of uh, uh, you know friends right so one is my family and friends uh, who just don't know what i do right uh, and and because i've changed so many roles uh, and whenever i'm i'm introduced in a party right uh, the yeah. only introduction i get is that pata nahi ye kya kar raha hai ye pichle 10 saal se pata nahi kya kya karta hai kabhi agri mein hai kabhi finance mein hai kabhi kuch hai kabhi abhi investor ban gaya hai so these kind of things my wife also can't introduce me so yeah. so nobody who knows me who are close to me very close to me right uh, they don't know what i do right because it's a very jumbled up role of yeah. advisor reviews investor and and literally there right the other set uh, you know i i have friends most of my friends are my colleagues ex colleagues right um, and and i think they know me for one thing a never giving up attitude and we laugh out because i am the guy who normally reaches out to people to ask for help to ask yaar tu is situation mein hota to kya karta mm -hmm. uh, you know so so people know my life uh, yeah. you know and they have known that how uh, you know in last decade uh, what risks i have taken right and uh, uh, and and they appreciate and and they are like you know uh, some day i want to become this high risk taker like you <laughs> uh, right so so i think uh, my colleagues who understand what i do right uh, they find it absurd that i take so crazy risks uh, in my life and uh, yeah they appreciate and that gives me lot of uh you know uh, motivation that gives me lot of uh, you know confidence uh you know and and uh, i mean i i go back and thank them uh, you know uh, that boss agar if you guys were not there to really cheer me up every time right i had a low right i don't think so i would have made it uh, probably here yeah we yeah, are no having a support system is uh, it's instrumental and you are a builder a supporter and a risk taker pratik i had so much fun man of having you on the pod and you know you walking us through the journey what you've done how you got into angel investing uh what's the thought process what's next for you uh very excited for you personally uh and uh and the entire ecosystem you know they would love to collaborate and work with you thanks a lot for doing it thank you thank you so much shiva i i really enjoyed uh, chatting and uh, i think it, uh, it it's been some time that i have reflected back uh, right so i think this uh, this platform gave me that opportunity to even reflect back and and thank the people who who really supported at the time right and i think uh, in the founders life not only in the founders life but i think uh, you know i want to be with that one one dial call for my founders right where whatever it is right you should be able to pick up the phone and talk which you can't talk to your co-founder which you talk or can't talk to your employees and uh, second is that uh, you know i think you should keep talking to people and taking advice and inputs right that is one of the main uh, uh, things which would help lot of us uh, uh, you know build what you're building and uh, build that confidence so thank you again for having me